Randy Hunter here from BeginningSax.com and RandyHunterJazz.VHX.TV. Now, in this video, I just want to give you a quick heads up or overview or just an introduction to my new lesson series on jazz articulation, advanced jazz articulation. Now, this is the articulation that you might hear used in this kind of sound. You know, sometimes you'll hear guys repeat notes. Uh, you might even hear it in solo lines. You know, so there are lots of um, applications for this advanced jazz articulation. Now, notice I say it's advanced jazz articulation because it's not real easy. You might want to first master the articulation. Just the upbeat jazz articulation, but you'll find that with this advanced jazz articulation, a lot of times the notes on the downbeats are articulated. Um, different, different, you know, there's no real set rules as far as how and when the articulation is used it's pretty evolves you know it evolves into part of your playing and in the way you pronounce and personalize your lines and it's kind of a dodden 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 kind of tongue um, for the well you know i don't want to explain it right now i'm going to give you some samples from the video series and um, this um, this four part series takes through, takes you through the basics of creating the articulation in part one. Part two, we work a little bit more on the basics of creating the articulation and I give you some exercises. In part three, we talk about and we work at doing um, jazz articulation and alternate fingerings where you, uh, where you can do the, the two notes that are using the articulation there. And in part four of the series, I take samples from transcription of some of our favorite players um, and we kind of talk about how they articulate the lines and possible um, variations that you can use in the articulation on those same lines because you know your articulation you want to develop it personally you want it to become a trademark of the way you play so I can give you some options that will help you learn how to explore and maybe even um, learn how to listen a little differently as you check out the great players okay so check out some of these samples Now, with the dot and dot and articulation, sometimes I'll call this jazz double tongue. Sometimes we've got the triple tongue, dot and da dot and da da. You might hear that in those kind of passages. And other times we've got oh, a quadruple tongue, a jazz quadruple tongue, dot and da da dot and da da da. You know, you might hear Stanley Tarantino doing some of that. Um, so, anyway, we're not going to jump into the triple tongue and the quadruple tongue right now. In fact, we're not going to do a whole lot with the double tongue except learn how to do this. Um, um, anyway, the way you can get to this portion of the tongue, try anchoring your tongue at the tip of the tongue at the base of the bottom teeth and then roll the tongue upward and that'll help you get to about the right spot. Now I know some folks say keep your tongue anchored at the base of your teeth. I'm not uh, into playing with with an anchor tongue constantly. Sometimes I like to use an anchor tongue, sometimes not because certainly another important thing to realize in addition to where you tongue is that the articulation actually occurs with the release of the tongue rather than a striking motion. So it's not like a snake trying to strike the reed. It's a release that creates the articulation. Now, I don't know if you can hear this on the video or not, but when I'm, I've got my reed wet, so you might try this on your own. Wet your reed up, stick your finger to it, pull it back. You might be able to hear that because that makes a pretty loud articulation sound. The tongue goes against the lip, it deadens the sound. Once you get to where you can do that, then you can work at arching the tongue upward from the lip, is still in contact with the lip, arch the tongue upward to the reed, and then we get the mm, mm, da, 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 da. So when the tongue pulls off of the reed, we get the da. So listen as I start with the lip tongue, and then I'm going to gradually go towards 
the reed, and I think you'll hear when I when I make the transition. So look. <laughs> go up the scale to the A, to the B, to the C, D, and then back down. then you know that part of what it takes to make repeated notes effective is having this jazz articulation. You know, um, I remember when I was younger trying to play repeated notes. And I'm thinking, gosh, those just sound really square, you know. So uh, eventually I, I discovered that... That the real secret to making those repeated notes sound good was to have good command over your jazz articulation. Now, but, uh, you know, sometimes you do it with just one note like that, but other times you'll use a, a couple of fingerings. So you'll use the articulation in combination with an alternate fingering. Like, for instance, on C, there I'm doing middle C, and maybe I'll do an overtone C fingering, and I've got several ways of fingering it. I mean, I can maybe I'll just do straight up overtone. So there I'm going back and forth between the middle C and the alternate C fingering. So what I've done is uh, I've selected excerpts from these trans from transcriptions from these guys I mentioned a moment ago. I've selected just short passages and we might make some observations. In fact, we'll make some observations about how these guys articulated these lines. But what I want to do is give you some options for practice for, you know, articulation options for practicing these lines that hopefully will help you start to turn the articulation into more of an organic component rather than an exactly like this every time component, you know. Our first lick is from Sonny Stitt's solo on a tune called Cottontail. Now this is a tune by Duke Ellington. 